Welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to check out a brand new toy line, and today it comes courtesy of my friends over at Super 7. This is a bit of an early look at their upcoming Super Kaiju Godzilla action figure line, which will be a Target Store exclusive, and they're slated to hit in and around October 1st. Now, with any Super Kaiju line, of course, you need the big Mamma Jamma star himself, Godzilla. And I rather like the packaging they have going on here. Super Kaiju right there in the corner, and you got Godzilla splashed across the top, Godzilla artwork, and on the sides of the box, Super Kaiju, a little Japanese writing, and you get to see Godzilla front and center. Now on the back side, you get to see the two characters that make up Wave 1. Of course, Godzilla 89 and Mechagodzilla 93. Caution, the city is crumbling. You get to build your own city ruins with destroyed building accessories. We will talk about that more in depth as we continue on in this video, so stay tuned. And of course, here's the barcode for when these start to hit store shelves, which again is slated for in and around October 1st. Now, you also need a villain of sorts to fight Godzilla 89, and who better than Mechagodzilla 93? They're like fine wines, each of them separated by their years. Now, you got some Mechagodzilla action going on for the artwork on the front of the box, and on the top of the box, is a nice window so you can look down on old Mecha Godzilla. It's got the same old box, same old artwork as Godzilla 89 does, so it's not gonna be too much different, of course, but you can collect them all. And of course, here is the barcode for Mecha Godzilla. But in either case, this is gonna be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the first wave of the brand new Godzilla Super Kaiju action figure line by Super 7. And so now here's everything taken out of the packaging. Each set includes one Godzilla action figure and one piece of a build a building. That's an interesting one. I've never really said that before. The buildings, let's say this. You get half a building for each character. There's no paint. It's hollow. There's not much to it. I would have loved to have seen them really deck this out, really go to town with the paint, really be able to build out a city, give them at least two or three buildings a piece, not just a half a building, you know what I'm saying? The Godzilla figure itself, it's gonna stand around the five, five and a half inch mark. He's got really nice bendy wire tail to him, he's got some really nice paint for what paint is there on his back spikes. That looks pretty cool. You got little details down to the tail. It all really blends well together. The tail, at least on the tip of the tail, has some bendy wire to it. So it's a little bit of a rubbery tail and it will spin. So at least you got a little bit of articulation there. That way you can do the big old clean sweeps and knock an enemy to the ground with Godzilla himself in the head portrait. In looking at the reference material online, I would say, yeah, that's definitely Godzilla 89. I think a lot more keen Godzilla fans with those eyes will notice certain details that I may miss. But for me, that looks pretty darn cool. And I love that you can open and close the mouth. And the mouth is painted, you got some red, you got the teeth, you get the idea. Along with the mouth articulation, he will also swivel at the neck. I do wish it was on a ball, you can make him look up and down. With the arms, they'll go all the way up. He's got some painted claws to him, single jointed elbows, and they will spin at the elbow just to kind of add to the wrist articulation of which he does not have that separate articulation there. Unfortunately, nothing at the waist. He's got all the sculpted detail lines to him. The skin looks pretty cool. The legs will kick out, kick off to the side. He has single jointed knees, big ol' Claude Hopper knees, I guess I could say. Now, with the feet, they're pretty sturdy. Nothing is loose on this Super 7 figure, and he does have peg holes on the bottom with some painted toenails. So, there isn't much to it in terms of paint, and for the articulation that he has, sure, that totally works. It's not meant to be overly articulated, I don't think, but for what articulation is there, it's okay. The problem, as we'll soon discuss, I would say, is the price point for these figures. Now, with Mechagodzilla, you get the other half of the building. Again, it's very hollow. This is the top parts of Godzilla's building. Same thing as before, no paint, nothing to it. And to me, 
That's where the bummer lies. Why isn't there more to this? In terms of Mechagodzilla 93, he has some nice silvery paints every which way. I wouldn't call it chrome by any means. It's just some nice silvery paint. And for the paint that is there, it's nicely done. And to be honest, there's really only one hiccup right there on the leg where the paint is kind of chipping away. The feet, the treads, those are nicely done. Nice sculpted detail with peg holes on the bottom. You have all the spikes of the tail. The tail does not move. The spikes on the back, up to the head, all the robotic parts and pieces and the doodads and the we'll say Batman Beyond circuitry for lack of a better term at the moment. But like Godzilla 89, Mechagodzilla 93 has some jaw articulation and he's got some sweet yellow eyes. Same thing with the head, I just wish that it was on the ball joint so you can get them looking up and down because they tend to always be kind of facing downward. When you move the legs, of course, the line of sight is still kind of sloped down where you can't really get them looking at each other the way that I would prefer. Same thing with Godzilla 89. Mechagodzilla has single jointed knees of which those were kind of stuck. So at least the joints are stuck instead of loose. We'll just say that. But very, very single jointed knees. They barely move. You got the big old robotic feet, which again are kind of stuck, so go easy. Maybe you heat them up just to be on the safe side, but they will rock and they'll move up and down with some peg holes. The legs will go out only so far. The arms, they'll go up nicely and they again will twist at the single jointed elbows. Nothing at the claws, nothing at the wrists. So overall, the articulation is fine for this, in a way, I guess, a retro inspired Godzilla toy line. The main problem for me, though, is this build a building, which is just so lackluster. Let's put this together here. Oh my God, I missed. Hold on. Let's let's try that again. One second. Here we go. Ah, nailed it. Sit there. They just sit on top of one another. Nothing locks in. Nothing situates. It will fall right over if the building goes south. So I guess that works in that sense. But isn't that kind of boring, right? Like, why not have at least two or three buildings per Godzilla? Like, you're kind of looking at each other going, you want to take this one? I'll take, I had the last one, go for it, Godzilla. And Godzilla will just kind of swing and boom, right there with his tail. He'll knock the one building down and they'll kind of look at each other and high five each other and they just go their separate ways. Again, it's mind boggling to me. Now, keep in mind, these are $36 a piece, which means after tax, it's roughly 80 bucks for the two of these with one building. There's no stepped on people. There's no people. There's no planes. There's no more buildings. There's nothing. It's just one single half of a building. And for me, it's just not enough that's there to keep me interested in terms of their scalature to look at Marvel Legends or McFarlane DC Multiverse. They are smaller than the Marvel Legends, especially a Wolverine, and significantly smaller than the DC Multiverse. So they'll stand right about the five, five and a half inch mark for those interested. So now to talk about, let's say, just the customer's perception of value. You have these Godzilla figures, which again, on the Target app, they're listed about $36 a piece. The Deca Toys Belly Bomb, I absolutely love it. It's $35. It comes with a beautifully sculpted figure, plenty of articulation, extra hands, a weapon for $35. So I would say, and I know there's other stipulations that I probably don't know about, you don't know about. There's no point in speculating. Maybe these are a low run, something like that. But for me personally, I don't see the value at $36. So no, these aren't going to be something that I can immediately recommend. If you are a huge Godzilla fan, these will more than likely be right up your alley. And might be a cool line for you to finally go after. Maybe you've been wanting some more detailed, more heavier, heftier type Godzilla figures than other companies have been putting out. That might be, again, right up your alley. But for me, no. In actuality, if they had more building parts where you can build out a city and as your collection grows, you have this giant landscape and you can just destroy the city in front of you. That would have been so much fun. Little people, you step on them, you can eat them, you hold them. Like stuff like that is fun, especially with Mechagodzilla, with 
lasers or rockets or clip-ons or something like that, especially with Super 7 being so inclined to do retro-inspired action figures, which I think they've nailed the retro aspect here, but they haven't pushed it far enough. No atomic breath, nothing like that. And that to me is where it's severely lacking. It's the accessories that bring these characters to life because otherwise for me as a collector, these are just very humdrum. So you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Super Kaiju, which I do like the name. I like the name, I like the packaging. The figures are okay, but again, it's the price point. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most important, remember, let's see some more stuff in the box with Wave 2. Build it up, make it bigger and better, and then we'll talk. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.